Hello everyone, Helen Yu here at IBM Tech Exchange. I'm here with Michelle Berry, who is co-founder and CEO of LifeHouse. Hello, Michelle. So nice to meet you here. It's so nice to meet you too. I've enjoyed talking with you. Likewise. And before we talk about virtual intelligent、uh, medical assistant today, I love to have you introduce yourself and、uh, LifeHouse. Absolutely,、uh, Michelle Berry. I am the co-founder and CEO of CTI Life Health, and we are a digital health ecosystem. And we've designed what we call the Life Health Passport,、uh, which is a digital health passport, and it is embedded with Vima. And Vima is our virtual intelligent medical assistant. Speaking of Vima, that's what I want to talk a little bit more about, right? I heard that you have Vima in both Africa. And you're locked, launching that in the United States now, and it's very two distinct markets. And how do you make that work? Sure, it's a really good question. Well, the role of Vima in the United States is to take a look at the medical records that we're pulling into the passport. So once somebody has access to the Life Health Passport, you're actually getting your medical records from、uh, downloadable systems that already exist. But you can also upload your own medical records. So if you're looking at、um, another doctor's office, another provider, another facility that maybe isn't under the same banner, you can actually upload them on your own. And so once that medical information is in there. It's combined with other data. It's combined with biometric data. If you're doing remote patient monitoring, or if you're doing your own、uh, monitoring at home,、uh, even under emergency situations,、uh, we also are doing e-commerce. And so, in the United States, we're getting even more data about your preferences for over-the-counter supplements,、um, prescriptions, and whatnot. So, in the U.S., the way that Vima works is Vima is looking at this controlled set of data that is all your own verified personal data, and it's helping make、um, decisions, summaries,、uh, alerts, flag things. So, if,、uh, flagging a drug interaction, for example, or helping bundle a health solution、uh, based on a, a real condition that's actually in your in your records and in your world. So that's how it works here.、Uh, in in emerging nations like in Africa, it's a little different.、Um, oftentimes, there isn't any historical Record、uh, to be seen. Sometimes there's something on paper, but most of that、uh, environment has not yet been digitized. So, in the event that someone's going into the hospital or clinic for the first time, it could be a government facility, it could be faith-based or private.、Um, in that instance, we can get their records、um, uploaded for the very first time,、mm. so they'll have their own baseline、uh, to go forward with. In the event that they have things that are in、uh, paper format, they can do the same as you have here. So you're actually going in and taking a picture with your camera, and you're storing it into your own private passport. So the, all the all the information's still in there. It's just in the United States we have the ability to get a little bit more historical information about your health conditions and your health status, whereas it's a little bit more new and a baseline in Africa as things start to move forward into the digital world. Okay. Well, I wish I met you two years ago <laughs> when I moved from one state to another. Right? You can imagine. The amount of work, paperwork, I have to go through signing up for a new doctor and pulling all the old records from the other doctor and over、uh, sending over in person from my personal medical record. But it's never too late. Thank you for elaborating how it works. But you know, really connecting with all different medical、uh, systems notorious, notoriously hard, especially in the U.S. Here, how do you crack that problem? Well, we're not trying to actually crack the problem of medical records. <laughs> What we're trying to do is crack the problem of having a totally decentralized, fragmented system. So, what we're really looking at right now is. Um, bringing everything together in an aggregated fashion. So we're doing the heavy lifting right now of trying to pull all the different health information about you, about the individual, into one environment, so that everything is all the data is in one location. So, you know, we're we're not trying to get the information to speak back to the systems. This is completely about health equity and empowering the individual first.、Mm -hmm. So the individual owns their own records. You're in charge of your own records,、um, and that's a first. You know, I think we think we're in control, but we're not. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're trying to do is make sure that you know you actually control your own records, and that means that you can share them with whomever you want to, with a family member, with a friend, with a caregiver, with a provider, with a hospital,、uh, anywhere in the world, and you also can revoke them. So if you've if you've left a certain area and you don't want your me your medical records hung out there, you you revoke the privileges as well. So it's all patient consent and patient control. Well, that's awesome, right? With the rise of、uh, aging population,、yeah. this is extremely 
uh, timely and relevant. It sure is. And especially, I think, not just for an aging population who um, may or may not be accustomed to using technology. Uh, I know a lot of uh, seniors are very wary of AI. Mm -hmm. They're very wary of tech in general. Yep. And if you think about um, our generation, I don't know about you, but I've got you know a mother who is in her late 70s and she's pretty healthy, but I want her to be home as long as possible and on her own terms. So this gives us an added ability, not just to have my own passport, but I can also add the members in my household and my loved ones into that same uh, ecosystem and share it with her. So now I can have have the ability to have understanding about my mom's health, real-time data, real data about her medical records, her prescriptions, her blood pressure readings, her heart rate. Um, I can also uh, help order transportation for her soon. I can add or help add prescriptions, have things to, brought to her that ordinarily would have caused her to miss an appointment or not pick up a prescription, things that could be life-threatening. I can now have some level of impact in keeping her in her own house as long as possible, but I can be that continuity of care and be um, monitoring and supporting her from a distance, whether that's 30 miles away from my house across town, or if that's you know her traveling on a cruise out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I could even still track her. Oh, traveler myself, I and mean, that would be so convenient, especially if let's say you're going to Africa mm -hmm. right, for a five for two weeks tour yeah. and it will be nice to know right and medical record there even you may not have medical insurance uh locally but Correct. the event of emergency you can always have your medical record with you um for convenience exactly that's why we call it passport too it's not just about having a digital health wallet mm -hmm. where you've got the information statically residing inside that wallet but it's actually a dynamic system that's built on mobility and helping people understand um, a borderless system of taking all their information about themselves and their families and being able to share that with people in emergent and non-emergent situations. So everything from um, travel and tourism all the way through to the other end of emergency preparedness or extreme situations where, you know, if you need someone to know your blood type and your, your you know, drug allergies, it'll be something that can be shared even if you can't be the one to share it. That's awesome. What's yeah. the prerequisite for a passport? Nothing. Really? That's, com <laughs> that's convenient how convenient it, it is? It is. It's, it's meant for the masses. I mean, we can create some really gorgeous, high-end, um, premium types of solutions for, you know, people who are wanting to track and trace everything and they're into uh, quantifying their personal best, like athletes or, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. people who travel heavily for work. But um, we also are really here for the masses. We're solving very simple, basic, mm -hmm. basic access and basic health equity. So that's, that's the first layer is making sure everybody has basic access to mm -hmm. making sure that their identities in there, their whatever records that they can bring in and upload are in there. Um, the only the only challenge is in certain emerging nations, maybe not having access to data or Wi-Fi okay. or the technology like a phone, tablet or computer to be able to access it. But usually even there, having a community health worker or someone who does have access to that technology, they can pull it off the cloud in a safe manner. Well, I'm sold on that. <laughs> I'll sign you up. Uh, speaking <laughs> of AI, right? Um, not everybody is comfortable to let AI give you recommendation how yeah. to ensure it's safe yeah. and accurate. Yeah. Well, I think part of ensuring that it's safe is just building the trust. You know, the trust is the most important thing when you're talking about your most precious, sacred thing, which is your health and your family's health, your loved ones. Um, so working with IBM um, and using the Watson X platform and really working tightly with all of the various controls and standards of what's best class in data protection, data security, personal health information in particular is always under scrutiny. Mm -hmm. So the partners that we work with on the integration, we vet them out carefully to make sure that they've gone through all the security checkpoints. So everyone from the, the company who's responsible for downloading the medical records to the uh, medical technology device that's integrated or the e-commerce partner, we make sure that they've already gone through all the checks and balances. And then when it comes to us, it's really about the person having control and deciding what the uh, technology can and will do to support them. Um, what I think is useful in this is it's not like going onto, um, onto an open, you know, 
open AI type of platform to Google search. So if you know that you're not feeling well or someone in your family has been diagnosed with something, you're not just out there searching and then trying to get the aggregate and figuring out what's best for you. This is completely in context. Mm. It's one of the first platforms that I'm aware of where you're not just getting your health records, your um, biometrics when you choose to, and your potential consumer behavior metrics from when you're at home. It's taking all of that in, uh, into account to make the recommendations. So it's 100% personalized and it's all within context. So I think the context is a big deal. Pets are next. We are literally working on how do we add pets because they are the next extended part of our family under our own roofs. Um, sometimes the only family under our own roofs and they have the same problems. They still have doctor's appointments, they have surgeries, they have prescriptions, they um, need refills, they have labs, they have scans, all the same information. And so how do we know, you know, do we need to escalate that care to an emergency appointment? Um, and also just being able to um, think about bundle health solutions to better care for our pets. So yeah. How do people find you if they're interested in learning more or sign up for it? Sure. Well, um, they can check our website out, which is www.lifehealth.global. Mm -hmm. And so they can reach us there. And uh, we've also got a profile on LinkedIn. Uh, if you just type in uh, Life Health, it, it automatically pulls it up, usually under hospital. It's, it's a heart, right? It's got a yeah. heart. Yeah, it's got a friendly heart, which is also Vima. I should be doing that more. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, the that's probably the easiest way, um, and you can also find myself, Michelle, on on LinkedIn too. And I'm happy to help. Okay. You know, any any way I can. Yeah. My last question here, Michelle, is how is Vima evolving? But what other innovations are coming up? You're most excited about? Mm. There's so much potential that it's um, it's actually a little bit mind blowing. I think the way technology is advancing at such an accelerated rate that it's it's kind of uh, breathtaking. But the, right, the next very immediate is um, working on uh, the transportation integration. And so that's with a trusted partner globally that um, is able to do a lot of medical transport as well, even in the U.S. And so uh, them and their partners, we're working on that right now. And the other piece of the puzzle is genomics. Um, you know, for us, it's not about getting fancy and trying to solve every problem on the planet. What we're trying to do is solve um, the most pressing issues around the globe that we can. So even knowing the top 10 predispositions or something along those lines becomes a real game changer for us uh, and making it not only uh, accessible, but scalable and affordable. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the accessibility. So, yeah. Well, and accessible. So that's really yeah, a mission that we can all live by. A hundred percent. Yeah. The goal is to get it to as many people as possible and uh, make sure that it has the ability to keep evolving as quickly as the, as the technology can. Thank you. Hope yeah. Thanks for having Look forward to seeing you again. And then hopefully we'll see each other again next year and learn more about what's happening in the next year. Undoubtedly. Yeah, I think we're, we're just uh, finally coming to the U.S. and I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about it. And uh, here, here, come, here we come, the U.K. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.